Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me for another Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination video. And today we're going to be looking in depth at tea dye. So tea dye is within the browns. Um, it's a beautiful warm brown as well, and it fades beautifully into oranges and reds, for example. So I'm going to show you that. I'm also going to be showing you how this compares to other browns within the Distress Ink and Oxide range. Everything I'm using can be found linked down below. That includes all the purchased items like my inks, my blending brushes, my mats for example, and then also the free items which is uh, like this colour chart which you fill in at home to see which colours you've got and which ones go where with each other. Okay, so first of all we are going to swatch this gorgeous tea, tea dye colour onto white cardstock. Now I always do this if you've not seen the videos before, we always go into white cardstock because that's where you get to see the most of the colour come through. I'm probably going to be doing a series where we swatch groups of colours onto blacks and craft as well so you can see those so keep an eye out for that series and I've got another fun series coming up that's all planned um, over the next sort of few weeks so definitely if you haven't already subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with those new videos. So that is tea dye. It's kind. Um, do you know what? It's actually perfect for a cup of tea for me. That's the colour I would like my cup of tea if someone was going to make one for me. It's really lovely. So it kind of goes into the yellows really nicely, into the browns, the darker browns, the blacks. It goes into. Oh, it's such a neutral colour. It really will go into pretty much any colour you like. So let's give my mat a wipe, my blending mat a wipe. Pop that to the side just for a moment while we take a look at other browns in the Distress Ink and Oxide range. In fact, before we go to the browns, I'm just going to stop at the oranges just so you can see dried marigold is quite similar. It is more towards the orange rather than the uh, kind of more muted browns, but it's going to work really nicely, I think, with these colour combinations that I'm going to be showing you. Uh, scattered straw is a little paler, but still not too dissimilar. Um, kind of got a hint of pink in there, one lipstick maybe. So let's, so you can see, it's actually a really good neutral colour. Let's go through to the browns now. Okay, so where is our tea dye? So tea dye is just here, as you can see. So it is more on the warmer side of the browns. Just above that, we've got rusty hinge. Now I always think rusty hinge should sit with the oranges, but Mr. Holtz has put them with the browns uh, in this order. So, you know, I'll stick with it, but it will fit into both. But I think that's a, the perfect sort of uh, next color along if you're looking at deepening the shades. Um, something like antique linen, much more on the gray side, much, much cooler. Frayed burlap, darker. Uh, so they're really, vintage photo is not too dissimilar, but again, cooler and darker. I think definitely, of, the, of all of them, dried marigold has got to be the closest. Not spot on, but the closest if you want to use something else because you don't have tea dye at the moment to do these colour combinations. Definitely try it out and let me know in the comments how you get on. So, like I say, that colour chart is available for you to download for free off my website and you can fill that in with the colours that you have. And it's really great to take to you to things like craft shows, craft fairs, when you're going to be purchasing Distress Inks and Oxides so you can see what you've already got at home and where you're kind of missing big batches of colour groups. So the next thing is to work on a, it's going to be a colour combination but it's going to be what I call tonal and that just means we're going from light to dark staying within the same sorts of colours and I am going to be coming next into Rusty Hinge so we talked about this one being um, kind of within the oranges more but it does sit next to tea dye in the distress chart so whenever um, Ranger or Tim Holtz Whenever they list their Distress Oxides, they're always within this sort of colour um, combination. So the ones that I've done in the chart, that's the order, sorry, not colour, the order that they would be in. And this is where Rusty Hinge actually sits next to tea dye. And you can see why. Look how well they blend together. Absolutely perfectly. That has taken me absolutely no effort at all to blend that in. I'd love to give you blending tips. You don't need it for that one. Look at that. So let's just wipe, give this a wipe. This is a slightly dampened piece of kitchen towel. It's damp on one side, dry on the other. Really nice and easy to use 
for wiping my mat because of course distress oxides and inks are um, water reactive so you don't want any water any dampness on any of your blending mats or tools when you are trying to get a smooth finish then I'm going to come into crackling campfire because I think this still sits within the oranges but it's the darkest orange I mean it is a red but it's what I would consider a very, very deep, dark, rich orange. So I think it's going to work really well to kind of finish off this colour combo, this ombre between all those oranges. Let's go back to Rusty Hinge and just blend those two lines in. Look at that. Perfect. So we've really got into the reds there. In fact, I think we need a little more Rusty Hinge there. We're kind of... Let's just pop this in. Now, I'm, I can be a bit of a perfectionist with my colour blending, unfortunately, and I will keep going back and forth, back and forth, until I'm happy. But hopefully you get, you get the idea here. There we go. That's better. Happier with that. So I would probably do a little more blending around here, but essentially you've got such a warm, almost an autumnal, feel there going from look how pale tea dye now looks when we first put it down look quite strong against these colors it definitely now looks paler um, so let's move on while that's drying to our second color combination so this one is a little bit different I'm going to be coming into purples yeah browns into purples um, as always I don't try these combinations out before I show them to you I kind of take a guess at what's going to look good and then we discover it together so I'm going to start again with tea dye but as I said tea dye to me is a neutral color it's a warm neutral but it is a neutral color so in essence it should really blend nicely into absolutely any shade so if you wanted to go down the blues or the greens route or wherever you want to I think this would you could make it work I think this would actually look beautiful going into greens okay then Victorian velvet mostly because I find this is a bit of a dusky pink which I think the duskiness is going to work nicely into tea dye and look at that I was not wrong look at that beautiful blend isn't that stunning I mean what would you think to mix those two together usually probably not and again that's really toned down the tea dye that we put down okay now give this a white because now we're going into those purples because uh victorian velvet is essentially a very very muted pale lilac almost it's a very much got a pink within it but it sits within the purples so then dusty concord so this i love this color again this kind of has See, I've done it again. It's called Dusty Concord, but I always call it Dusky Concord. And I do think it has that dusky kind of shade to it. It's It's got that sort of frosted look to it, chalky look that Victorian Velvet also has. Uh, but it is Dusty Concord. So I'm going to bring this quite far up because the next one, Villainous Potion, is such a deep, dark colour. I really don't want that to be too strong and overpower everything. Okay, so I'm going back to my Victorian Velvet brush, not applying any more ink at the moment. I'm just working in circles along that blend line. Now with these two, you can really see the pigment sitting on top. I've kind of got this chalky colour, so let's clean my brush off there and come back. There we go. So you can see this sort of white, almost frosted look over the top. Everything dries beautifully afterwards. Let's just put a little more Victorian velvet over here. The trouble is sometimes you can blend and blend and blend and you can actually end up losing your first colours because you've blended out so far. Okay, let's go into our Villainous Potion. This is a nice clean blending brush today and like I say this is a deep dark colour. Let's pick that up and pop that inside my vellum just to hold that still. Look how rich this colour is which is why I didn't want too much of it on the end here. I didn't want it to overpower everything else and as always of course it does blend really nicely into Dusty Concord because they're such similar colours. There we go. 
let's just come back with dusty concord give that a little swoop over there we go another color combination you can see that kind of while it's drying you can see the damp patches now i always think that gives it almost like a cloudy sky look do you know what i mean like it looks like it's a you look up at night time just as the sun's setting and you've still got the the light down the bottom you've got the darker creeping in but you've kind of got the clouds as well that give it that mottled look i really like that i like that a lot okay so there are two different color combinations both featuring tea dye and again look how different tea dye looks when it's put against different colors so i hope you found this useful and i hope you join me and go and check out some more of the videos for the other colors that are on the playlist just here if you could subscribe to my channel if you've not already then it's just here and um, thank you if you have and you can shop anything i've used in this video using this link just at the top here thank you everybody i'll see you again very soon